Welcome to the most amazing fun time of the year, Christmas. I don't know about you, but I look forward to Christmas all year long. It's such a fun time when we get to celebrate Jesus' birthday with our family and friends. Everywhere you look, there's Christmas lights and decorations. It's just awesome. All month long, we're celebrating the gift of Jesus and talking about the true meaning of Christmas. You see, Christmas may be big and fancy and exciting, but it's also simple. There's no symbol required for the holiday. Jesus is the greatest gift you'll ever be given. You, did you know that Jesus' birth fulfilled a promise God made to his people long ago? You see, throughout history, things didn't always go well for God's people. There was lots of darkness, but God always provides some light in the darkest times. The Bible is full of amazing promises that God made and fulfilled. But today's story is the biggest, greatest of all. And that promise was for everyone. Let's take a closer look. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Isaiah, chapter nine, verse six. Jess stared out the window at the ice beating down. Every holiday planned for the weekend had been canceled. And to top it off, the school had just released Jess's most recent grades. A D in language arts? What happened, Jess? I don't know. You're such a good storyteller. I just, I can't make all the words work out when I try to write it down. Can I go play Mindstorm? Hun, you need to read for an hour first. An hour? I thought it was 30 minutes. Your teacher and I talked. 
We think a little more reading time will help. Jess glared. I don't have anything to read. You've got an entire bookshelf in your room. Those are little kid books. Then look at Emma's bookshelf. Emma was Jess's older sister, already in high school. Fine, whatever. Jess stalked upstairs to Emma's room, peeked inside. The room was empty, but everything was neatly organized. Emma had even done all of the colorful artwork on her own walls. Miss Perfect. Jess sighed. Everything seemed to come easily to Emma. Writing, math, friends, life. I'll probably be stuck in fifth grade for the rest of my life. Jess stood in front of Emma's bookshelf, running her finger over the thick spines. At last, a swirl of color on the bottom shelf caught her eye. Comic book Bible. Huh. Jess thumped down onto the floor and pulled the book off the shelf. She flipped it open, and color exploded off the page. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The images of creation were vivid and detailed, as if she were right there. Huh. Pretty cool. Jess found herself drawn into the familiar stories, seeing and hearing them in a brand new way. Moses and the Red Sea. The fall of Jericho. David and Goliath. Esther, boldly approaching the king. <clears throat> David's incredible poetry in the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. After the Psalms, though, Jess paged into unfamiliar territory. Isn't Daniel in the lion's den around here somewhere? Who's this guy? Jess stared at a man with a long white beard, using a quill to scribble on a scroll. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father Who Lives Forever and Prince Who Brings Peace. Hey! Jess nearly dropped the book. She glanced up to see Emma standing in the doorway. What are you doing in my room? Mom said I could pick a book. Well, ask next time, okay? I didn't touch anything. Okay, okay, it's fine. Emma settled down on the floor beside Jess and took a look at the book. Aunt Chris gave me this book when I started high school. It's pretty cool. I mean, until this part. It's kind of hard to make a guy writing a letter exciting. Jess pointed out Mr. Whitebeard. Oh, you mean Isaiah? Who's he talking about? Jesus? Yeah, but it's way more amazing when you look at the big picture. You see, God's people were in big trouble. Over and over, the Israelites promised to love and obey God. And then every single time, they turned their backs on Him. Turned their backs? Like how? Well, they'd start praying to false gods like other nations around them, trying to do things their own way. So God allowed them to be captured by other nations. Emma flipped back, showing images of battles, powerful foreign kings, groups of captives. The Israelites got in really big trouble. Things looked hopeless. So God just ditched them? No way. Every single time, God showed he was still with them. He sent kings who loved God, like David and Solomon and Josiah. And he sent prophets like Elijah and Isaiah to speak God's truth and hope to the people. Even though they totally messed up? Yep. Through it all, God promised that he was going to send someone who would rescue them forever. Jess flipped back to Isaiah and read slowly. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. That's only one prophecy. There are hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about Jesus coming. Jess nodded, trying to take it in. That's a lot of promises. And God came through. The Israelites had to wait a long time, but God kept every single one of those promises when he sent Jesus to live on earth. His very own son. Oh, little town of Bethlehem and all that. You can take the book if you want. Emma tapped the comic book Bible and just smiled. Does God promise that I'll get a better grade in language arts? <laughs> no, but he does promise to be with you and give you the patience and courage you need to keep working on it. 
They both listened to the ice rattling against the window. Hey, you want to play Mindstorm? Sure, just let me read a little more first. Emma gave a thumbs up and Jess settled back down to keep reading. She paged forward to the book of Luke, eager to see for herself again how God had delivered on his promise to send a savior. Wow, our God is amazing. He promised that he would send a savior and just like that, he fulfilled his promise. It came true. God fulfilled that promise when he sent Jesus. God is always faithful and we know he will keep his promises today and in the future. We can have hope because God keeps his promises. Sometimes things don't happen in life that, that we just don't understand. Sometimes we feel anxious or scared about what that will happen in the future. But we can always have hope because we know that God keeps his promise. Bottom line, we can trust him no matter what. Christmas might look a little different this year. It's been a tough year for, well, for a lot of us. But the real meaning of Christmas is something we can celebrate no matter what. It's not about great gifts or even delicious treats. Christmas is about celebrating the gift of Jesus. When we remember how God sent Jesus for you, and he keeps all his promises, just as the Bible verse this month tells us in Luke 2, 11, today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. All month, let's work at memorizing this because it's a great reminder of the real meaning of Christmas. To dive into this week's lesson a little deeper, click on the link below. Thank you and God bless.